Well, howdy, friends. Brian Flessig and Mad River Outfitters of the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A episodes. As always, friends, we really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. Hit that like button. And if you have questions, send them over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. That way, we'll see them. Unfortunately, we really can't get to all the comments on social media, nor can we get to the comments even here on YouTube religiously. So we do monitor email 96 hours a day, feels like sometimes. Anyway, all emails are answered and some of them are even answered here on the YouTube channel. And if we do that, we're gonna send you a free hat and a fly box. And as always, if it's a customer service question, pick up the phone and give us a call here at the shop. Customer service is what we do for a living. Fly fishing is what we love and what we sell. So let's jump right in. Mason Fulton. Mason Fulton is from Everton, Arkansas. And Mason says, hello everyone at Mad River. I've been fly fishing for two years and with your help of your YouTube channel, I've learned a great deal for you. Well, thanks for watching, Mason. I wanted to start branching out from the normal fish like trout and bass. I was wondering what type of leader I should use when trying to fish for fish with teeth. Do I need a bite line like with regular fishing or will a normal monofilament leader work? If so, what kind of line should I use and what accommodations so should I make to attach it to my leader? Uh, your YouTube channel has been incredibly helpful over these years. Keep up the great work, Mason Fulton. Well, Mason, the answer is no. A monofilament leader is not typically going to withstand a toothy fish. So you are going to need some sort of bite guard. And for bite guards, it's really simple. You're just going to add maybe a 6 to 10 inch piece of either wire or one of the rare times that I might use fluorocarbon. I, 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 I so rarely use it, I can't hardly spell it. Fluorocar, I'm gonna have to take my shoes off. You're gonna use wire, or you're gonna use fluorocarbon. Uh, a lot of situations in freshwater for pike, for certain musky applications, uh, for barracuda, for sharks, we're using wire. And a couple of coated wires on the market. You've got the Cortland stainless steel coated wire, and you also have the Rio brand. Those are the two that we sell the most of here at the shop. They come in different uh, pound tests and therefore they're different diameters. And on occasion, in a very clear water for muskies, we'll use fluorocarbon. I use fluorocarbon for snook. Uh, so for muskie, uh, for snook in the salt, and for tarpon in the salt, I'm always using fluorocarbon. Okay, and the reason why I use fluorocarbon for this is it's much more abrasion resistant than monofilament. So therefore, that's, that's really what you're working against. It's not about the pound test. It's about the abrasion resistance of those toothy fish or the sharp jaws and sharp gill plates that might rub up against that um, first six, eight inches of your tippet uh, that, that the fly is tied to. Okay, and it's really simple. Uh, you're going to build an appropriate leader. Okay, let's say this is my musky rod. And around here we fish some fairly dirty water for musky. So my musky rod is an 11 weight or a 10 weight. Let's say it's a 10 weight. My 10 weight for musky. My leader is going to be uh, about 6 foot of 0.027. And then I'm going to go about two foot of 0.024. And then I might go with a tippet of 0.022. Okay. Again, this is going to be a stiff monofilament. You've all heard me talk about Maxima Clear or also the Cortland Mono. And then I'm going to attach a six to eight inch piece of, say, 30 to 40 pound wire. 
And I'm going to attach that using an Albright knot. That's the knot that I use. You can also use an improved blood knot, but I just use an Albright knot. Always have. And of course, right there is a link on how to tie the Albright knot. Um, same story, to be honest with you, if I was tarpon fishing, of course, there's no such thing as a tarpon leader or a musky leader. It all has to do with the fly and what you're fishing for. So I'm just going to change that to, say, 6 to 10 inches of fluoro. And that might be 50 to 60 pound, uh, again, which is usually about 27 or 28 thousandths, maybe in that ballpark, depending on the brand and the quality of the fluorocarbon that you use. Really easy. And again, I just Albright that to the last piece of my leader. Really easy. So I think it's the same as what you call regular fishing. Um, you're using a bite guard. Same story. Attach it to your leader. Build your leader as you would in order to uh, be able to cast the fly that you're throwing. And then it must be able to withstand the fight of the fish. And then this bite guard is what's really going to protect against the sharp gill plates, sharp jaws, sharp teeth, etc., etc. All right, well, there you go, Mason. A uh, pretty common question. And we appreciate you uh, chiming in with that. We'll get you out a hat and a free fly box. And uh, again, we appreciate you being here, just like everybody. And as always, friends, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss an episode. Hit that like button. It just makes us feel good. And send your questions over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. And if it's a customer service question, please pick up the phone and give us a call here at the shop. Customer service is what we do for a living. Fly fishing is what we love and what we sell. So thanks for being here and stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.